I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. In this Inkscape tutorial, I want to show you how to do these wild floral vector designs here. They're very easy. This is almost a direct extension from a couple of the previous tutorials we did where we took a geometric shape and then spun it many, many times, except this is more organic. And I want to highlight two specific features in Inkscape. One of them is jitter nodes. If you don't know what that is, I'll show you. And the other is one of my absolute favorites, tiled clones. So at the end of this tutorial, you'll have the exact settings where you can spin objects and make these types of flowers. So let's begin. If you're gonna follow along, I am on the A4 template from the welcome screen, 210 millimeters by 297 millimeters. This will definitely come into play in this tutorial because the jitter nodes tool works in pixels. So we all wanna be in the same scale roughly. We'll start by creating a 30 point star, which is easy to do with the polygons and stars tool. Click on this. It may begin with a five point star. Hold left mouse button and drag. We wanna be on 35 of what Inkscape calls corners, and that will look like this. Now, if yours looks something like this, that's fine. You can use this for something else again, but we wanna have very long, arms of the star. So this node down here, mine happens to be green right now, in the valley of the points, if I hold control, I can bring that one in to something like that. Once you have it the way you like it, let's move to the next step, which is we're gonna add a radial gradient to it. To get the gradient going, you wanna be on the fill and stroke menu, and if you don't see it, it's under object, fill and stroke. Make sure you're on the fill tab, and radial gradient is this item right here, click there, That'll give you the default. Now to see your adjustment bars, we can change the gradient itself. Click on the pencil and the beginning point in the center, that's gonna be the starting color that the object was. I'll click on that and I can see there it is. If I click on this note at the tip, I'll notice on the opacity slider, this is going into full transparency, but we don't want that. I wanna be on a full color. So if I drag this to full opacity, I can see now it's all that same base color. I can make that gradient go from dark to light instead by changing the endpoint to white, which will help because then we won't have any issues if we take this project outside of Inkscape. If you go with it like this, it'll work, but let's go to some more detail. I'll take our color palette here so we can cheat when we zoom in. Oh, now my gradient bars are gone. To get it back, just click on the pencil again. Here they go. To add another gradient stop, just double click anywhere on that bar. How about right here? And I'll use my eyedropper to change it to this color. That's what I want. I'm going to go from a rich pink fading it out so the endpoints turn white. Maybe I'll add one more stop in there like that. Basically what's going to happen is we're going to take this shape and make many clones of it getting smaller and smaller and more random with the variations. And the part you'll see most are these arms of the star. So if you want a lighter flower, make it lighter. If you want a richer, darker flower, then you, you don't need this last gradient stop. Okay, let's back up and jitter some nodes. All jitter nodes means is, if you look at the example here, each node is a point of our shape and you can move these independently to make it look any way you want or you can use an extension under modify path and have the computer do it for you. That's how we're gonna take a very mathematical uniform shape here and create something more organic. But to do that first, we have to change it from an object to a path. So with it selected, go up to path, object to path. It looks like nothing happened, but if you double click, now you can see each of your nodes. Let's go up to extensions, modify path, jitter nodes. You're gonna get a menu box like this. Now I inputted this earlier because these settings seem to work pretty well, but play with it, experiment away. Maximum displacement in X, 15. Maximum displacement in Y, five. Make sure you have shift node selected. And for the distribution of displacements choices, I'm on uniform. We'll do live preview. <laughs> and it gives you this mess. And that's good. That's what I want, actually. If yours looks like just a bunch of zigzags, that means that you might be at the wrong scale. So if that happens, try it again, but make your 35 point star way smaller. Zoom in and then try this jitter nodes or scale it up. If you still can't figure it out, let me know in the comments and we'll sort it out for you. Since I like the way this looks, I'll click apply. All right, let's move on to cloning this thing. 
We're gonna use the tiled clones feature to make 25 of these shapes getting incrementally smaller and rotating with a little bit of randomness. And let me first show you step-by-step step how to put the settings in so you can save them and use them over and over and make all sorts of flowers or whatever you wanna do. First, let's find create tiled clones. Go to edit, clone, create tiled clones. It's gonna bring out the sidebar menu here. We'll come back to this. Let me just show you how it works. When you look at the menu for the first time, there's a whole bunch of tabs. Under symmetry, just keep it on P1, simple translation. Go over to shift. So this guide here showing you just the shift X is all we care about because what it's gonna do is it's gonna take this shape and shift it over on the X axis by whatever percent we say. To illustrate this, I'll do negative 50. Actually, let me show you what it does with no shift, just so you, if this is the first time you're ever doing create tile clones. So let's shift it over zero. Down here under apply to tiled clones, I'm gonna say this hexagon here, I want one row, so one X axis row, and I just want two of them. So one by two, create. There it is, the original and the clone, remove. Now we'll do the minus 50%. So what do you think is gonna happen? Instead of going over a full unit like that, it's only gonna go over half as far. So one row, two of these things, create. There it is at half. Just to drive the point home, I'll do minus 90%, create. We want them to be directly on top of each other, which would be negative 100, create. It's, you can't see it, but it's there. Go over to the next tab, scale, just these two values. So I click on an example object. I wanna be negative 5% per column scale X and negative 5% for the per column scale Y. The shift that we did before, it's still there, which means that whatever we do with scale is gonna happen in place, right on top of each other. Create. There's the first, there's the second. You could do three of them. Create. You do 25 of them. There they go. <laughs> Remove. A last setting to show you, and then we'll do it on the flower, which brings us to rotation. As an example, I'll show you a five degree rotation. We're making one row stacked on top of itself, scaling down 5% every single time. And we're gonna do 25 clones, create. There we go. Does that look familiar if you've been following along? We did this a couple times in previous tutorials. So this is old news. Let's spice it up a bit, remove. Instead, on rotation, we're gonna go 20 degrees and we're gonna add a randomized factor of 25%. So if we were doing it with the hexagon, it would look like this, almost like an abstract rose. But now we can apply these create tiled clone settings to our 35 point jitter node star okay ready for the payoff here is our original 35 point star with the jitter nodes applied and a radial gradient i'll go to create tiled clones symmetry p1 shift negative 100 on the x-axis scale negative five percent per column x and y rotation 20 degrees per column with the randomization factor of 25 percent one row 25 clones create oh i had a stroke on it if this happens to you just go to back to the fill and stroke on stroke X out it. There it is. That's what I wanted to show you. I think it's pretty cool that Inkscape can give us these tools where we can make organic looking. I mean, look at that. You can add a blur if you want. I'll select everything. Control G to group it and add a slight blur in there. Look at that. Pop it on a gradient. I don't know. I just, I like this. I think this is a good application. Let me know in the comments below if it worked for you or if you made adjustments, made it even better or send me a tweet. Let me see what you came up with. I'd love to share in this journey, Inkscape journey together. All right, that'll do it. See you next time.